Well, uh, we're here at Chunchuk Mule uh, in Yucatan. It's the perfect laboratory really for remote sensing research. Uh, I've been working here really since 1999 and what we found very early on was that remote sensing, Im remotely sensed imagery uh, such as Landsat, aerial photography, and uh, even some of the synthetic aperture radar worked really well in this region. And <clears throat> in fact, the archaeological site itself was found using aerial photography in the 1970s. So what I, uh, what I decided to do was return after completing my dissertation and fly an aerial drone over the region because we had great aerial photography from uh, planes, but you could only see really the large structures. The smaller structures needed to be mapped uh, on foot and it took us many years to do so. What I'm testing is the capability of an aerial drone to do the work that we did in a decade in possibly you know, a few weeks. So we're flying a DJI Phantom 3 Advanced at about uh, 40 meters over the entire site center and we're going to model it. Uh, using a program called Altazure to create a 3D model of the uh, site center. One of the things that makes this region so perfect for using aerial photography is the climate and the vegetation. It's late May right now and as you can see there are absolutely no leaves on the trees. The rains have not come yet and even when they do the vegetation here rarely grows over say five to ten meters tall so we have very low vegetation very dry and it's extremely flat so any change in topography uh, really greater than a half a meter is a cultural feature so by flying 3d photography photogrammetry over the site and looking for any change in elevations as well as any lines of rocks, we're able to map out the archaeological site um, fairly easily. Our hope is also that in areas that even have taller trees, we'll be able to peek through the trees because they have such little foliage on them right now. So we're using an automated program called Altazure that will actually create a grid. Well, we create the grid, but it then flies that grid for you because it would be very difficult to manually operate a drone and keep it in a perfect parallel uh, alignment in transects. So Altazure, uh, you create the area, you design the parameters, the altitude, number of passes, the frequency of imagery, the overlap of the imagery. The overlap is key because you want to create eventually a 3D image. So through stereoscopic overlap, <clears throat> you're able to see the same point from multiple vantage, uh, vantages. So Altazure first runs the transects in orthophoto mode, which means looking straight down to create a planimetric uh, stitched photo, looking straight down. Then it'll fly four more series of transects one from the east, one from the west, one from the north, one from the south, each looking inward at a 45 degree angle. And what that gives you is, again, each point is covered not only with the overlap of each image and the overlap of each transect, but then covered from each angle in all directions. You throw all of that data into a computer and uh, it will determine what points intersect from each of those vantage points. And that creates a 3D point in XYZ axis. Then you, uh, it does this over and over and over and you get hundreds of thousands of points. And we call this a point cloud. Then the computer will stitch together which points would create a logical surface which points connect to which points, therefore creating a mesh. Then that mesh is textured, in other words, it's painted upon 
by the original photographs. So you've created a, a wire mesh and then the photographs are put back on so that those have tone and color and it looks very much like the original photographs. But it's a 3D model that then you can manipulate, you can measure. It, it's not just a pretty picture, it's actually a series of <coughs> measurable data points that just like a, a three-dimensional map. Well, if this works as I intend, uh, I believe that this could be applied fairly widely in Yucatan and other areas where the vegetation is similarly low and dry. This would not work in heavily forested areas such as Guatemala, but here in Yucatan, yes, Chunchukmil is the driest and the flattest, which is why I chose this, but there are other portions of Yucatan where, uh, especially when they're uh, doing slash and burn agriculture in an open milpa, then this technology would be able to map that open acreage or hectares within hours as opposed to days or weeks as opposed to months.